you have not yet finished your learning, but you're leaving the comfort of the academic home for your clinical home. The experiences that you will have in learning in the clinic are um, irreplaceable and invaluable. You have to take what we have taught you and the skills you have practiced out into the real world before you're ready to graduate and um, go on your way as doctors of physical therapy. I wanna thank family members here. I always thank family, family members for supporting students through a rigorous and difficult uh, curriculum but oh my goodness, what we have all jointly been through in the last six months is indescribable and the students have needed your support more than ever. So I want to thank you for being that support and you should be very, very proud of your um, family member who was a member of the DPT awesome. class of 2021. I want to thank um, the faculty I know because I get the emails and the phone calls um, that people are working long, long days well into the night to try and figure out ways to uh, prepare you for clinic and for graduation in this environment that we're in. So I want to thank uh, the faculty who have uh, worked so hard. And then I want to thank you and congratulate you. Thank you for your patience as we all ride, uh, as my daughter calls it, a Corona coaster together. Uh, be assured that we have all collaborated to prepare you uh, as best we possibly can for clinic. Conventional wisdom says that the Chinese word for crisis is made up of two characters. One character means dangerous or precarious, and the other character means a change point. I don't think that it's remiss to say that we are in a crisis right now. And I think that those words apply. It is dangerous, but it also gives us an opportunity for change. And we see that, for example, in the recent CMS allowance for billing for telehealth. And hopefully that will be something that physical therapists will be able to carry forward into the permanent future. So despite all of the problems and inconveniences and scariness, there will be opportunities in this time. And as I reflect on this, I think that this experience should give us empathy because this is not unlike the, uh, pa the situations faced by many of our patients. We didn't anticipate this um, pandemic and to a large extent, we were unprepared for it just as our patients are not prepared for the injury that brings them to us or the disease diagnosis that they uh, encounter. Likewise, there's no clear pathway out of this, and that is clinical care. We have tried to give you and you have sought uh, firm rules, but when you're working with a human being in a situation, you always have to have flexibility and you always have to be prepared for the unexpected. Think of your patients um, postoperatively who get compl secondary complications, the person who has a cancer diagnosis and thinks they're done with chemotherapy only to find out they've had a metastasis. This crisis tests our patients. We all thought, and I said it, you can do anything for a month. You can do anything for three months. Now it's six months. Hopefully by the end of the year, we'll have um, an opportunity to think about the end of this time, but probably not. And so in reality, none of us know how long or what the path in front of us is. And for many of our patients, that's what it is. We were 
we've been talking over the last five weeks of having a child with a disability. No parent prepares for that. No parent thinks they have the emotional resilience to handle it, but somewhere from the depths of our human nature, they pull it up and accomplish amazing, amazing things. One of my favorite life quotes uh, was given to me by Berta Bobath. You've heard me say it before. I'll say it again. When children would cry during treatment, she would say, you have to stress them. A system that's not stressed will not mature. Well, I'm here to declare that you have been stressed and I hope that you have matured. Take from this time more empathy and more compassion. Remember how you feel in this time of uncertainty and translate that to the people you work with who are going through times of uncertainty. Physical therapists continue to have a unique place in the healthcare system. And that unique place is brought to us by the opportunities that we have to form relationships. There are very few professions in healthcare that have this opportunity anymore. Guided by uh, productivity requirements, and uh, guided by financial needs, many, many professions never get to know the people they work with and never have the opportunity to enjoy sometimes those lifelong relationships that develop after your ability to help someone. I often tell the story of Itzhak Perlman, who is a famous violinist, an Israeli um, uh, violinist who experienced polio at a young age and now walks with crutches or power mobility. He was playing in a concert once, as the story goes, and some of the strings to his violin broke. And there was a collective gasp in the audience because the concert was about to begin and they knew how hard it was for him to walk off the stage and restring his violin. But he what I could do with what I had left. It's what we help patients explore we help them explore what they have left. I keep a memory box in my office, used to be on a bulletin board, but now it's in a box. And that memory box is full of pictures of children, pictures of former students helping children, uh, letters from families and children. And it means everything to me as I reflect back on my now over 40 years in this profession. So you are about to start your memory box and your stories. Congratulations, go out and try your wings. We're excited to watch you fly. And I look forward to gathering with you, hopefully in person in May to celebrate your graduation. And now Dr. Utzman. Thanks, Dr. Mandich. Um, it's a special honor today to introduce our keynote speaker and the recipient of the 2020 Mary Lou Barnes Award for Distinguished Professional Service. The award honors an alumnus of our program who has made significant contributions to the PT profession through teaching ex excellence in teaching, research, or service. The award was named for the creator, founder, and first director of the physical therapy program at WVU. Dr. Barnes's mission was to develop a program that would provide highly qualified physical therapists to fulfill the healthcare needs of our state and to graduate physical therapists who would be lifelong learners and would advance the profession throughout their careers. Under her leadership, the program admitted its first class of students in 1970, and this happens to be the 50th anniversary of that milestone. After leading the program at WVU into the early 1980s, Dr. Barnes moved on to, the, to chair the PT program at Georgia State University. 
She was honored with numerous professional awards during her career, including the APTA's highest honor, the Mary McMillan Award, and she was named a Catherine Worthingham Fellow. This year's recipient of the Mary Lou Barnes Award for Distinguished Professional Service is Dr. Katerina Carey Abraham. In 1994, Dr. Abraham earned her bachelor's degree in physical therapy. She was in the first PT class at Wheeling Jesuit University, which in its early years was a collaborative program between Wheeling and WVU. After graduating, she continued studies and became a board certified orthopedic clinical specialist in 2001. She earned a master of public health from WVU in 2004 and a Doctor of Physical Therapy degree from Temple University in 2009. She has been a member of the PT faculty at Wheeling Jesuit University for nearly 20 years, initially serving as the program's DCE. She now teaches content in orthopedic physical therapy, public health and wellness, and women's health. She provides pro bono care and community wellness activities in her hometown of Wheeling, and has also regularly provided pro bono services in Haiti. She has published a book chapter and peer-reviewed articles regarding pre- and postnatal exercise. She has published articles regarding pro bono services and service learning and physical therapy, and she has presented this work at both national and international conferences. I've gotten to know Carrie through her extensive work with the West Virginia chapter of the American Physical Therapy Association. Uh, Carrie, I don't think there's a role or an office that you haven't filled in the association. And we really appreciate all you've done for our profession within the state. During her tenure as chapter president, she oversaw the development of a strategic plan that would align the chapter with the updated vision and mission of the American Physical Therapy Association. She led the organization through major transitions in the chapter's administrative office and lobbying staff. She coordinated the chapter's response to numerous legislative challenges to protect our scope of practice. And she spearheaded the chapter's adoption of the APTA's Choose PT and PT First campaigns aimed at promoting the role of physical therapy to combat the opioid epidemic. As a leader, Carrie is humble and focused on service to others. Her approach is always to learn and collaborate with others to make things better. She embodies the profession's core values of compassion and caring, excellence, altruism, and professional duty. And it is my honor to present this award to Dr. Carrie Abraham. Sorry, I had to unmute myself there for a second. Um, I'm not sure how I'm supposed to speak now because I'm just really overwhelmed by it all. Um, thanks, Ralph. Uh, thank you all for having me today. I'm just, I'm humbled and so honored to have been considered for this recognition in memory of Dr. Barnes. It's, um, it's really something. So I'm going to try and get through this and I am a, uh, I'm an emotional person by nature. So, you know, if I have a moment, just give me a second. I'll, I'll come back. I'll, I'll come back to you. Um, but I was thinking about when, when this came up and really thinking about what to share, considering um, this is a, a recognition of service and, and everything that you've been through and where we all are right now. And, and I struggled a little bit and I kept thinking, why am I struggling to come up with a message? And I'm I think I'm struggling, or I struggled with the development of this because I'm, I'm struggling. You know, it's a really, it's a difficult place to be in the world right now with a lot of uncertainties and a lot of unknowns. And so I just kind of let myself be in that for a minute, a lot of minutes actually. Um, and I reflected on um, everything that we're experiencing right now. And Dr. Mandich really, really did a a great job is kind of outlining that. And, and this is really unprecedented, what we're trying to, to function in and, and serve through. So um, the, the world right now, it, it is a very heavy place. Everywhere you look, we have heaviness. We're in the midst of this global pandemic. We have civil unrest, really the likes that I've never experienced in my lifetime, I can say fortunately, but really difficult to to watch these things transpire. It's election season, which for me tends to always be a bit of a circus. 
um, with, with everything that's going on and how our system functions. And so many people are feeling anxious and sad and fearful and uh, so much uncertainty. And, and I'm thinking, where's the uplifting message? Where's the positive stuff that's coming out of this? And unfortunately, I wasn't finding a whole lot. And I kept going back to one thing, this is a very simple thing, but I kept going back to a social media post that I would see make it circles around. And it was Mr. Rogers when there would be sadness and tragedy and his mom would say to him, look for the helpers, look for the people trying to make a difference. And, and when I thought about that and, and kind of looked at that, looked at everything that we're dealing with, and I looked at it through that lens, it really did bring a certain level of and and some light to um, all of these situations. And so I couldn't agree with him more um, that there are always in the midst of any crisis, there are always people that are willing to run to the challenge to try and improve the, uh, create a better outcome and improve what happens for everyone uh, in the situation. So um, again, started to think about where we were. And, you know, a week or so ago, we had the anniversary of 9-11. And I sat and I was watching the, the replays of all the newscasts of that day. And I remember that day, 19 years ago, holding my infant son, staring at the television, just in shock and disbelief on what is happening. Nobody knew what was happening. But at the same time that those masses of people were running away in fear and shock, there were people running towards. I'm sure they didn't have a plan because nobody knew what was happening, but they just knew that there was something that needed to be done and they were willing to be that person to do something. Your firefighters, your police officers, your clergy, your tugboat captains. That's one of my favorite stories is just, you know, identifying this need and there are these the, the massive humanity that needs assistance and just rushing to that, rushing there to do whatever you could to be uh, of help. Um, you know, our, our cities and our towns have experienced, unfortunately, some of the destructive outcomes from um, non-peaceful protests from our social injustices that we're experiencing. And in, in all of that devastation, again, you have neighbors coming to the aid of neighbors and strangers helping strangers, whether it be sweeping glass off of the sidewalk from a shattered store window or standing arm in arm, guarding the doorway of a business that a community member has spent their life savings creating so that they can make an impact on their community. You know, that's, that's, that's helping. COVID, oh my goodness, COVID. COVID taxed our healthcare system. As Dr. Mandich said, we weren't ready for that. We didn't know what to do with that. But there were practitioners all over the country willing to leave the relative safety of their homes and their families and their friends to aid those practitioners who were working day to day, extended hour shifts, exhausting themselves to try and save the lives of complete strangers. Um, the Hurricane Sally completely devastated the Gulf Coast. And again, neighbors in the midst of the crisis themselves, rushing to their neighbor to it. I can't imagine a better image of humanity than that. Somebody that's in the, in the heavy themselves but willing to extend a hand. Um, so uh, you, if we look at, at all of these things that are happening with that lens of where's the help? Where are the helpers? What can I do uh, to be that presence in the midst of this crisis? I, I, think that's where, uh, I think that's where we need to be. And it's not that the helpers always need to have a plan. They just need to have a heart for the need and be willing to take that step forward to be a part of that solution. And in the midst of that, when all of this seems lost, when somebody does that and they extend that hand, all of a sudden you start to feel, you know, maybe I'm gonna get through this. I'm not alone in this. We can all do this together. And I, I kind of see you a little bit, you know, you're about to embark on these life-changing experiences in clinical education. I know it doesn't seem that way right now, but it really is. It really will change everything about your outlook because as Dr. Mandich said, you're going from that comfort and that safety of being in a nice controlled classroom environment 
out to normally clinical education, there's so much uncertainty, but now you add the level of a global pandemic onto that and it's just a hundredfold. But you, you might be walking in there and I see this with students a lot, they're heading into CE1 and they're looking at you with these eyes like, I have no idea what I'm doing. When we know you do, but you don't have that confidence yet to really understand that you can make an impact. So you go in and you're thinking, why are the faculty letting me go? I can't believe they're letting me go and actually work on people. But then you come out of it at the other end with a confidence of what you do know and all that you can, all that you can do um, for patients and the impact that you can have. So it completely changes the, the perspective. Um, and you'll go in with the focus on mechanics with, okay, my examination flow. Did I ask the right history questions? Did I get all my tests and measures? Did I put a function on all of my goals? Is my intervention plan complete and evidence-based? And, and all of that is understandable based on where you are. You're taking that classroom knowledge and you're really applying it now into a clinical setting and you're shifting from really a student mindset to a clinician mindset. So all of that's understandable, but I wanna challenge you a little bit to be mindful of where you are and who you're working with. You know, you're gonna be looking into the eyes of a patient who um, is fearful, who may have pain, who may have, high, I'm sure, high levels of anxiety just because they are ill or injured, but they're ill or injured right now in situations where they may be alone. They may not have faculty support with them because of hospital restrictions on visitations and um, all of those additional layers of complexity that we're dealing with in the system right now. So I want you to, be there, be in that moment with your patient. Um, do you remember when you applied to physical therapy school? I, how many of you said, I wanna be a physical therapist because I wanna help people? I know I did, that's, that's what I said. But at the time I didn't really understand the depth of what that meant and I didn't understand the opportunities that would be afforded to me to help in the various ways that I have been able to, I've been blessed to be able to do that. So when you're working with those patients and you have patients who are sharing maybe a story with you and you, you're listening maybe a little bit longer than you might intend to listen or you're thinking, oh, I can't bill for this time or you know, you're engaged with family members who are so fearful because their loved one has just been admitted to the hospital after a stroke and they don't, they're uncertain of the outcome. But spending that time holding their hand, listening to that story valuing their experience and their reality, you're providing them with hope. So helping will help, will provide those individuals that you're serving with hope that it's going to be better. Things are going to improve. They are not alone um, in whatever crisis that you're dealing with. And it doesn't stop just with patient care. You're now entering into a profession that requires you to serve in a variety of, of levels. So direct patient care, absolutely. But if you see an issue that is um, negatively affecting patients or your community, and you see an opportunity to make a difference, please do it, please step up. Um, you don't have to, you're not gonna be alone in your work at all. Think about a group of people with a helper mentality. They are unstoppable, unstoppable, unstoppable. And it's very exciting and it's very um, invigorating and it's, um, it can be very inspiring. So don't be afraid that I don't know what I'm doing or I, I, I can't take on that role because I've never done that before. And like I said, you will never be alone. All you have to do is have a heart for your purpose and a willingness to try. So. It might be holding the hand of that patient. It might be listening to that story. It might be advocating for legislation because your patient says to you, I need you, I need your care, but I can't get to you. My insurance only gives me six visits. My copay is $60 a visit. I can't afford to come and see you. My bus routes have changed and I no longer can access public transportation to get to you. So it may be that you're providing help and hope in ways that you don't even realize right now but those opportunities will present themselves to you. So don't be afraid to step up and step out of that comfort zone of clinical practice and really make that impact uh, and be a helper in those areas as well. It's amazing what we do, the profession that you have um, 
entered and are entering at a deeper level is amazing. You are going to do amazing things. You're gonna be impacted by the work that you do and the patients that you serve in ways that you have no idea right now. So I, what I want you to do is I want you to allow that in, allow yourself to be transformed by those experiences, both personally and professionally. And that's gonna allow you to transform your world into a better place. So go and be helpers and be confident in knowing that you are in the exact place at this very moment that you're supposed to be. So just be, just be in that moment. I wish you the best of luck. If there's anything that I can ever do to help or be of assistance to you, please reach out. Your faculty know where to find me, but um, I wish you the best. And thank you for all that you're going to do, you're doing and going to do for our profession. You're welcome. Thank you, Carrie. And now it's my turn and she gave me that moment. And like, how am I supposed to talk after listening to Carrie? And again, it's so inspirational. All of us that work with patients, there's, there's always a story to tell that this was your moment, you know, that this is why I decided to be a physical therapist and why we fight so hard to still work in the clinic. So I wanna say congratulations to each of you for getting to this point um, in your professional program. We acknowledge now that you successfully completed uh, two years of academic work. You passed your comprehensive exam and you're looking forward to the next step. We feel like you're ready to continue your education in the full-time clinical setting. And thus really the symbolism of the white coat. You're ready to take that next step. It's a significant and an exciting time in your program. Normally we would happily be standing beside you and giving you a hug and shaking your hand and you would get a picture with Dr. Mandich and all those good things that uh, walk the line of the entire faculty. So you don't quite get to do that this year, but I do want you to know that um, we are all with you. We're proud of you. We're with you in spirit. Um, we will be thinking of you as we watch you don your coat and um, just know that you do have our hearts and hopes into the next generation of physical therapists as we watch this moment happen. So um, before I present the class, I think I wanna say this only because it was perfect timing. About two days ago, I received an email from one of my patients that I've been working with for several months who almost lost his hand in an explosion type of injury and um, he was holding this huge fish that he had caught with his injured hand. And all he said, he sent the picture with this huge, thank you. I thought I wouldn't have my hand. And those are those moments that are so special that you remember the rest of your life that you did make a difference to someone. So please remember that as you go into the clinic. So what we're going to see now is, um, each of you donning your coat, as well as some words of wisdom from some of past award winners or CIs, um, as we are unable to do the full um, sponsorship to really um, give you a message in the pocket of your coat, we did um, want to include a few um, words that people sent to share with you. So that will be a part of this video and then will be followed by um, your moment. So let me just say that as the class advisor, it's my privilege to present the WVU DPT class of 2021. Isabella Anile.
Lauren Klein. Asia Coger. Nathan Coyle. Danielle Del Rio.
after our soap.
Gabrielle Lemley. William Lucas. McIntyre. Rachel Mears. Janya Mukamala. Jason Phillips.
Robin Pollard. Rodriguez. Weaver.
Bria Welker. Marissa Workman. Okay, Dr. Evans, is it time to present the Code of Ethics? Okay, I just wanted to make sure I was on program here. Um, one of our traditions for this ceremony is to have each student sign the American Physical Therapy Association's Code of Ethics as a pledge to uphold the core values of our profession. Um, we're not going to show that today because we really wanted to focus on the students receiving their white coats, but um, we will put the Code of Ethics up for everybody to see. As the students have learned, one of the hallmarks of a profession is to have an established code of ethics. According to Swisher and Hiller, the purposes of a code of ethics are to articulate the moral vision and self-understanding of the profession, to educate and provide guidance to physical therapists for ethical conduct and decision-making, and to promote accountability for members of the profession to meet society's expectations. The original Code of Ethics was adopted by the APTA in 1935. That early Code of Ethics stated that physical therapists never diagnose, we always follow doctor's orders, and we may place a, a sign on our door stating that we're a physical therapist. Um, the code has obviously changed a lot over the years to adapt to the development of our healthcare system and the evolution of our profession and our role in healthcare. The latest version of the Code of Ethics that is scrolling on your screen was adopted by the APTA in 2010 and revised again in 2020, and it recognizes the roles and responsibilities of the physical therapist to serve their patients, communities, and society. 
It includes eight key principles based on the core values of our profession, which are accountability, altruism, collaboration, compassion and caring, professional duty, excellence, integrity, and social responsibility. Good morning. Hello to all of you. And it seems befitting at the tide mark of your journey and the passing of an impactful giant, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, to remind you what she said about being a professional. This goes along with what you heard from Dr. Abraham and just now from Dr. Utzman. She said, and this is one of my favorite quote books, that if you want to be a true professional, you will do something outside of yourself. I hope you remember that as you garner all of your clinical skills in the near future. And I now present the Clinical Pathways Scholar Award. This award goes to the students who have earned the highest GPAs in the class. There are three such students this year who have earned a 4.0. They are Lauren Klein, Anna McIntyre, and Rachel Mears. Congratulations to the three of you. All right, class, I don't know if you can see me or not. <laughs> there we are. I'm going to put on my white coat for you. All right. So I don't know how I could follow any of that. Um, as you'll see in the email you got from me today, my deep feelings about this moment. But it is my pleasure at this point to present the Emerging Young Professional Award. So first of all, I'm incredibly impressed that there were five nominees out of this whole class. So that speaks highly to, as a group, um, how incredibly uh, rich we feel your potential is to contribute to this profession. The Emerging Young Professional Award was created to recognize an individual who exemplifies both the academic and professional behaviors that really embody the core values of the profession, which you've heard talked about. And those include things like commitment to learning, interpersonal skills, communication, um, <clears throat> and professional responsibility. So <clears throat> this year's award E, um, actually I had the, the distinct pleasure to get to know before she even entered PT school and um, was incredibly impressed as she worked on several clinical research projects uh, in her undergraduate um, profession. As a matter of fact, according to her undergraduate mentor, she took charge as an undergraduate student of an entire research project, ended up presenting at um, a national meeting and went on to win the Van Leer uh, Award for the undergraduates that year. In addition to her uh, research capability, which I had the chance to and pleasure to work with uh, during her PT school as well. She was incredibly eager to step up in anything. So not just research, but she assisted with continuing ed courses so that she could sit in and learn some more. She tutored others. Um, she was a lab worker, but truly more of a lab manager at this point. And honestly, I find her to be confident, compassionate, friendly, and always eager to learn and grow. And it's my great pleasure to announce this year's awardee is Ms. Lauren Klein. Hello, can everyone hear me? Perfect. Uh, good afternoon, professors, family, 
friends, and fellow classmates. My name is William Lucas, and I am the Vice President of the West Virginia University Doctorate of Physical Therapy Class of 2021. It is an honor today to represent this group of amazing individuals and spotlight some of the memories we have shared together over the past two years. But first, on behalf of the entire class of 2021, I would like to say a heartfelt thank you to the people who have gotten us to this highly anticipated ceremony today, our dedicated and unwavering professors. During these unprecedented times, each and every one of you have worked tirelessly, courageously, and creatively to ensure that our education continued without interruption. The transition to a hybrid type learning style was not easy for any of us. But this group of professors found a way to make an interactive learning experience work for each of us. We greatly appreciate your hard work and dedication in making sure we are ready to hit the ground running for our clinicals beginning next week. You have taught us the meaning of perseverance and determination in accomplishing our set goals. And for that lesson, we'll be forever grateful. This program and the faculty here have become our home away from home. You have laid the foundation for us as future clinicians, and we look forward to utilizing our knowledge to better, li better the lives and provide optimal care to the patients we will see here very soon. We wouldn't be where we are today without you, and we look forward to being colleagues in the near future and to make you proud of our accomplishments and our careers. I would also like to say thank you to those who are in attendance on this live call our family and friends. You're the ones who have helped us the past six to seven years to get to this point in our career journey. Thank you for letting us practice some of our techniques on you over the holidays and definitely trusting us a lot. Thank you for always providing words of encouragement when we call you after a tough practical and thank you for making us the individuals we are today. It is an honor today to represent this diverse group of classmates and soon to be lifelong friends and colleagues coming from many different states across the country. We have students from the great states of West Virginia, Maryland, Virginia, New York, Pennsylvania, and of course, I couldn't forget about Decker from Minnesota. Besides demographics, this group also comes from many different educational backgrounds. We have students that studied athletic training, biology, health science, exercise science, and one student who actually came in with an undergraduate degree in veterinary medicine. Shout out to Robin for that. From a student perspective, it has been truly amazing to see the effort, growth, and maturation of my fellow classmates over the past two years. On the first day of our orientation, as nervous as we all were, we had the chance to sit down and listen to the then second year students to get an understanding of what we should expect in the next three years of our education. Much of what they said was to be expected. Find a way of studying that works for you. This is no longer a competition. You guys all have the same goals of becoming PTs. Find balance between life and school, et cetera. But what most of us remember them saying is, beware of the third week in October. Be ready for all the tests. That quote still makes my palms sweat a little bit today because that truly was a tough week. Prior to us entering the program though, the curriculum actually changed a bit, but that week was still pretty bad. But I want, what I wanna highlight most after that short story is these students can accomplish anything given any circumstance. Four to five tests and practicals a week, now just seems like another week to us. I'm not sure many of the professors even know this, but that seventh floor in the Health Science Center a day or two before a test is packed full of PT students until three or four in the morning. Whether it's Cassie making another brief 100 page study guide for an orthopedics test, or Anna saving our grades again with her Quizlet flashcards, these individuals know what it takes to not just pass, but to excel. It's truly heartwarming to know that this group of physical therapy students will be the next generation of healthcare workers in the very near future. From a few tears after a difficult practical to many cheers at a Mountaineer football game, 
This has been a very amazing ride with each and every one of you. As I'm sure the nerves are rising as we embark on this new journey, I encourage you to take any opportunity that is thrown your way and make the most of it, even if it may be outside of your comfort zone. Ask questions, be attentive, and strive for greatness. In closing, a heartfelt congratulations to my fellow class of 2021 on receiving your distinguished white coats. Each and every one of you have earned it. I wish you the best clinical experiences and I look forward to talking with each and every one of you throughout this next year of clinical rotations. Thank you. Okay, um, all of us really um, love this ceremony and we were worried that perhaps it would lose something by doing it in this way, but I can assure you that the spirit of this pathway ceremony has been preserved. Um, and one of the beauties of this is that it will be recorded for posterity. Um, but I think this is always true that we do not work um, and coordinate our remarks, but when people talk about this profession, and thank you, Carrie, for those lovely comments, um, a theme always emerges. And the theme that emerges is that this is a wonderful profession of caring that you will give your life to, but will enrich your life in ways um, beyond description. So as I sit here in this gorgeous Sunday morning in October, September with the sun streaming through my um, house and the future uncertain, I am very certain that I am surrounded by wonderful colleagues and future colleagues, and I am incredibly grateful for all of you, and I wish you the best. And for you students, after I see you a couple more times this week, I'll look forward to um, hearing from you as you begin this journey. So thank you to everyone who made this possible. Thank you to families and friends who are listening. Thank you to students and um, Godspeed. <laughs>